Hello, sports fans and baseball fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today I have a guest on the show, uh, Phillies Hot Stove Media, Luke. And he's a Phillies fan. We're going to talk a little bit about the Phillies and the upcoming uh, 2023 uh, season for them. And we're going to discuss uh, the um, some of the rule changes that are coming up for 2023 and uh, the um, and the uh, new balanced schedule. So, Luke, thanks for uh, coming on. It's a pleasure to have you. Thanks for having me, Bob. Happy to be here. So, I guess we're going to discuss. Start out by talking about the Phillies this year. I mean, they came off uh, really. I thought was a surprising run to the to the World Series last year. Um, like in the, I mean, the first half of the season, or like you know, well, um, um, uh, Joe Girardi was managing. Yeah. Right at that at that time, you had to honestly be thinking. We're yeah, I, I was, I, I was, I was going to be like happy if we even finished five hundred at that point. I mean, like I, I never would have thought we would have finished five hundred, made the playoffs, and let alone even made it to the World Series and had been uh, two two wins away from a World Series championship. I mean, that was just surreal in itself. Yeah, I mean, and it was incredible. That like the minute Rob Thompson took over, they won like nine or ten games in a row. Right, it was crazy. Yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> So uh, yeah, but a little it probably had to be a little disappointing to finally uh, end up losing to the uh, yeah Astros yeah it was I mean I thought that we had a lot of momentum going into I mean obviously the Astros Astros did too you know sweeping out the whole postseason uh, you know and really just you know kicking the Yankees butt um, but I, I really thought that we had a chance there when we were up two to one and after we got a new hit that's when I kind of figured that uh, I, w I didn't think it was going to be you know likely that we were going to win the World Series. But, I mean, the fact we made it there, uh, we made a statement by by making it there, uh, was just fantastic. And that was such a surreal experience to be able to witness that. Um, but uh, the fact we were so close, I think, still kind of kind of leaves me wanting more. But um, I'm really happy with the team we got this year. Yeah. And, and by the way, that's a nice segue. We can talk about the uh, yeah. 2023 Phillies. Mm -hmm. Um, what are your what's your impression of the team as compared to last year, and what are you looking forward to in uh, 2023? Um, you know, it's 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 really interesting because it's not really the way you you, you kind of like picture this team because Bryce Harper uh, is going to miss the majority of the first half of the season, but with the addition yeah. of Trey Turner, which is my favorite acquisition this offseason, I think it's every Phillies fan's uh, favorite acquisition this offseason. I mean, this man is the overall complete package. He was ranked the number one shortstop in all baseball. Um, I mean, he's just an all-around, just fantastic player. Um, you know, had a career high in RBIs last year, uh, and now he's going to be carrying over that that mentality of the you know that he had with the Los Angeles Dodgers uh, when they won the most games in franchise history. Uh, and he's really going to be able to mentor Bryson Stott uh, and also Al Boone too. I think he's going to have an impact on everybody. Uh, you know, he's won a World Series with the Nationals in 2019, so he's back with his old teammate Bryce Harper. Um, the Craig Kimbrell acquisition, I thought, you know, it was very interesting to me. Uh, you know, obviously he has a connection with Dave Dombrowski, and uh, he's obviously not what he once was. Uh, but I, th I really do think that he's going to have a good impact, you know, the back end of the bullpen. Uh, and I think the back end of our bullpen is is really, really strong, uh, especially when we got Soto from the from the Detroit Tigers. That was a really great trade. Uh, we only gave up Matt Vierling, who really, really had no use for him anyway with the acquisition of Brandon Marsh last year. You know, Nick Maton is kind of a utility player and also Donnie Sands. So we, that was that was a great trade for us. Um, so I, I've just been overall just so pleased. And also um, uh, Tywan Walker, too, from the Mets. I mean, a bit of an overpay, uh, but he's going to fit in really nice in that rotation. I mean, he's, he's going to really fit in well in this rotation. I mean, I, the only thing that concerns me about him is, you know, him in the second half. He's been kind of known to, like, kind of, you know, have some injuries and not really be as productive in the second half of the season. But, um, you know, still, I mean, he's – put up really good numbers over the last few years. Nick Castellanos, I'm looking for him to bounce back. You know, if you go back and take a look at his numbers from April uh, of last year, and that, you know, I believe it was like, I think opening day was like April 8th or something like that, uh, up until like around like May 5th. I mean, he was putting up like the numbers he was putting up in 2021. Uh, and then apparently he had a wrist injury like in early May. And then ever since that, up until like we lost uh, game six of the World Series, he was not productive at all. He, he was very, very disappointing. Uh, and he's already looked great in spring training, so I fully expect him to carry that into uh, the regular season. Of course, it's only been a week. Um, Kyle Schwarber, he's always notoriously been known to start off very slow. 
Um, but I mean, you saw what he what he does yeah. when the calendar month turns over the dream, man. He's he's a monster. Yeah, um, I, mean, I love Kyle Schwarber. I mean, he gets on these runs where he's just an unstoppable. Yeah, um, he's just unstoppable. We got the best catcher in baseball behind the plate and JT Ramuto. Um, yeah. yeah, and I, I was really worried about him for a while. Um, it was right around the time when Bryce Harper uh, uh, broke his thumb and going against Blake Snell, and then he finally started to to turn his season around and. Um, it, he, he's solidified himself as the best catcher in the game by far. Um, the rotation, as I kind of touched on before, Tom Walker. I'm so worried about the number five spot with Bailey Falter. I mean, especially what happened the other day. I know his spring training, but against the Red Sox, uh, he really didn't look very good. Uh, and granted, it was on the road and, you know, w- whatever. I mean, he just he didn't really look very good, in my opinion. Uh, but uh, Zach Weaver, of course, at the top there. Um, I mean, he's going to have another Zach Weaver type season. Another Zach Weaver type season with that, you know, that uh, high velo with the fastball. He's going to blow up by guys. I mean, Aaron Lowell is going to have, you know, hopefully a, a you know, improvement uh, off of last season. I mean, he already, uh, you know, already was a really big improvement over the year prior in 2021, and uh, 2022 was a really, you know, bounce back solid year for him. He almost looked more like he did in 2018, um, you know, than than the years prior. Uh, so I fully expect him to carry that into uh, this upcoming season. Also, Ranger Suarez, um, you know, you, you can only go about, you know, six inning, you know, six, seven innings tops. But, I mean, he's still right. a really solid starter uh, down the road. So, you know, I'm, I'm very pleased with this team. I, I don't, the only thing that I'm a little bit concerned about is the middle relief. I mean, we did lose Zach Eflin to the Tampa Bay Rays in free agency. Right. Kyle Gale was on, uh, but that was for the best. But uh, And also, Noah Syndergaard, of course, slipped away to the Los Angeles Dodgers. Um, and I never would have paid him what the Dodgers paid him. That's just my opinion. But uh, I'm a little bit worried about the middle relief right now. Um, but, uh, you know, we have to see what uh, um, Andrew Painter does in spring training. I mean, he looked great the other day, uh, despite allowing that two-run home run. But his his stuff was pretty lively. You know, he was topping out at like 99. But, I, I mean, I, I'm a little bit hesitant to have him slide in that number five spot because I, I, I don't like the rush-up prospects. Um, but uh, I think that's pretty much the only weak spot is just that middle relief. All right, he's a uh, painter. Uh, is only like 18 or something, isn't he? Or yeah, he's a little bit older than that, but he was 18 when he was drafted, so he's like probably pushing like 20 now. But, yeah, he's st- st- still too young, I, I believe, to be up in the big leagues. But the Phillies have notoriously been known for rushing up prospects. So, yeah. So, uh, and is the plan with uh, for Bryson uh, Stott to play him at uh, second base? Then? Yes, yes, it is, yeah. You because, know, of course, Gene Segura is now gone. You know, uh, they had his option decline, and he went to the to Marlins, and that now allows Bryson Stott to move over to second. I think he's going to be able to relax there a little bit more, especially yeah. to to look, to look over to his right and see Trey Turner. Um, you know, he's definitely, as I mentioned before, is really going to help him become a better all-around player. Um, so I, I think that uh, he'll, he'll really do well at second base. Yeah. All right. Well, so I guess in 2023, one of the things that we want to discuss is some of these new rule changes that mm-hmm. are in effect. Um, <laughs> and starting with everybody's talking about the uh, the pitch clock. Um, what are your impressions so far of the pitch clock? I mean, the results speak for themselves. I mean, the games are going by much quicker and uh, it's more efficient. And I think it's just going to be more enjoyable to watch, especially not only for, for us who are die our baseball fans, but for even the casuals that, you know, maybe go to a game on a Friday night in July or, you know, or just, you know, trying to find someone to watch something around on TV. I mean, the, the game's going to have a little bit more action. It's going to be a little bit more uh, enjoyable to watch. I mean, I, I think you're going to see ticket sales go up, especially if the, the game time continues to get, you know, shorter and shorter. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think you're going to see tickets go up, especially during the week, because a lot of parents don't want to take their kids to the game because it just goes so long. But if you're starting to see mm-hmm. games, you know, half an hour to 40 minutes shorter, then that is kind of a game changer. So I think that the owners are you know, should be very happy about that. With the, with the, with the everybody, it's a, it's a win for everybody. I mean, the owners get more money, the players are going to get more money at the end of the day. So, um, you know, I think the results have, you know, pretty much spoke for themselves. It's Yeah, it's been, I mean, yeah. I, I think the combination of, you know, the limit on how many times the pitcher can throw over unless he actually picks the guy off. Yeah. And the, uh, and the, and the bigger bases is another thing. The yeah, yeah. The slightly yeah. bigger bases. Um, so that's, that's kind of, that was kind of like a, um, uh, you know, a health risk thing, but also with the bigger bases, you've got a little less space between the bases. So base stealers mm-hmm. might have a better chance of stealing the bases. Right. And, yeah. Yeah. That, that'll, that, uh, that should increase the action. And, uh, you know, that's mm-hmm. what we want to see when they go to the ballpark. 
They want the fight. Yeah. They want it to move, and they want to see action. They don't want right. to see the pitcher just walking around and looking. Nobody wants to see that. Yeah, yeah. That, and I think that what's saving the game is, as you said, like offense, and because like I think at old pitchers, you know, pitchers' duels is, is is fun to watch at times. But I mean, I think the majority of the the younger generation of baseball fans would much rather see like a like a uh, like a blowout than like a like a pitcher's duel. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I don't. Yeah. I mean, I, people want to see action. Yeah. So, um, and then the uh, other, now the rule that I'm not that really happy about is them getting rid of the shift. Because when you get rid of the shift, you're you're actually putting in a rule that tells the manager how he has to manage the game. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, the players could have cleaned this up themselves. The players could have taken care of this. By working on bunting and working on like doing the butcher boy hits to the other side, but uh, yeah, what are your feelings about that? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm support of banning the shift just simply because I'm just I, I I really want to save the game. I think it's one of those things where adapt or die. And I agree that you know you know I, a perfect example is Ryan Howard for years. The shift just absolutely killed his career because he he failed to make the adjustment to hit the ball the other way. And yeah. I mean that's just one of the many examples that we could use. Um, but I think that offense is saving the game. I think that, unfortunately, whether you like it or not, I think we have to do all things necessary to try to promote more offense and try to allow for more offense. And I think banning the shift, I mean, obviously will certainly help with that. So um, I, I do think it, it, it was the right decision. But I, I understand where you're coming from. I understand, like, we're, like people are you know, making arguments similar to what you just made. And I, I completely – like, my dad is, like, exactly how you feel. He is very against uh, banning the shift. And I, I completely understand where they're coming from. But I, I think it's important that – you know, because you know, I've always criticized Commissioner Manfred for not you know, taking the steps to try to speed up the game and make the game more exciting. And, you know, whether you like it or not, I mean, that is, you know, a, a pretty drastic change to try to increase the amount of offense in the game. So you got to give him credit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, and then the new balanced schedule that we have, every team will play every mm -hmm. other team. And that I am pretty excited about. I like mm -hmm. that. Me too. Me too. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, you know, one drawback I, you know, I could kind of comes to my mind is, you know, obviously there's going to be less divisional games now. Um, I don't think that's, I don't think that's going to have any impact on like the rivalries or anything like that. But, uh, I'm really, I, I, I think this is not only good you know, for, uh, you know, individual teams, I just think it's good for all, you know, just baseball in, in general to kind of get more exposure and have, you know, superstars like Mike Trout, Shoei Otani, Juan Soto, Ronald King Jr. fly all across the country. And not just be limited to the East Coast or the West Coast for the majority of the season. So uh, yeah. now you're going to see them, you know, all across the country. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, one of the arguments was that a lot of a lot of um, fans and a lot of ballparks and stadiums didn't get to see a lot of the stars from the, like the other league. And um, yeah. Well, so, but it I think it it works out really. It lo works out better for you than it does for me. Because for me, from my standpoint, we were playing Detroit and, um, you know, the Twins and we were playing the Kansas City Royals. We were playing them like a lot, 12, 15, ones, nine yeah. each, you know. And whereas, you know, the Phillies had to play Atlanta a lot, had to play the Mets a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now you'll play them yeah. less. But it always changes. I mean, in 10 years or 15, yeah, it always, it's always going to change. Yeah. But I, I see where you're coming from. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, so I, just to uh, recap, a little, talk about a little bit about, you know, the White Sox upcoming season. I think they, uh, last year they, I think they, a lot of players underperformed and they had um, a lot of, they had a lot of injuries. But if they can stay healthier this year and um, avoid the injuries, I think we will have a better year. I'm not so sure. If we'll win the division, because I think the Twins have uh, retooled a little bit. And, yeah, yeah, they have. And Cleveland is still, you know, you got to still worry about Cleveland. As far yeah, as, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I think also Tony Larusa had a kind of a negative impact on the team, so I think it was. Yeah, time for him. he probably did. Yeah. So, uh, anything else you want to talk about about the upcoming season? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just really excited. As you said, like a lot of big changes this year. I mean, I'm, I'm really glad that the games, uh, you know, are speeding up significantly. Again, I think we're going to start to see baseball maybe get talked about a little bit more. And I, th I just think that people are going to have more desire to go to the ballparks, you know, and, and watch the games and, you know, on TV. And, you know, when the games are shorter and they're just, they're more, it's, just, it's more enjoyable to watch. There's more action because you go take a look at the top sports in the country, like football and basketball, there's, there's very little like moping around. You know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. like, constant action. I think that, you know, banning the shift and, you know, trying to, you know, make it a bit, the base is bigger. And um, I think it's just tr trying to, uh, you know, allow for, for, for more action in, in the game. And I think that that's, they're, they're smart in doing that because that's definitely going to increase uh, the offense. And uh, I think that as much as the offense increases, I think the, the fan interest will also increase with that as well. Yeah, I think, I think by and large, everything that they did, I think, was is going to have a positive effect yeah. on the game and on the, uh, you know, the fans, viewership, and everything uh, associated with it, so. Yeah, mm -hmm. I totally agree. All right. Well, it was, uh, hey, I want to say, Luke, it was nice having you on. Um, I, by the way, I will be putting a link to Luke's uh, channel in the description. So uh, I highly recommend that uh, if you, especially if you're a Phillies fan, but if you're a baseball fan, check out Luke's channel. He's always got an interesting perspective, talks about the Phillies a lot, and uh, it's, it's a great channel. And uh, so check it out.